Today, we'll show you about TOW. The Russians probably have the best anti-tank missiles, but the United States military is not a loser either. First produced in 1970, TOW is one of the most widely used anti-tank guided missiles. The TOW anti-tank guided missile is still deadly after nearly 50 years of service where it proved itself as a very effective weapon. The TOW anti-tank missiles were responsible for many destroyed tanks, mostly Russian-made. It was introduced during the war in Vietnam. Initially developed by Hughes Aircraft between 1963 and 1968, the XBGM-71A was designed for both ground and helleborne applications. In 1997, Raytheon Corporation purchased Hughes Electronics from General Motors Corporation, so development and production of TOW systems now comes under the Raytheon brand. The TOW missiles are typically used by various companies for heavy anti-armor work, but still the TOW is able to knock out even the most protected tanks. The weapon is used in anti-armor, anti-bunker, anti-fortification, and anti-amphibious landing roles. TOW is in service with over 45 armed forces and is integrated on over 15,000 ground, vehicle, and helicopter platforms worldwide. The missiles can be fired from the ground using a tripod-mounted launch tube or installed on vehicles. The TOW missile system can be fitted as a single-tube pedestal mount on military vehicles or as two-tube or four-tube Under Armour systems on vehicles such as the improved TOW vehicle JLTV, Humvee, M901, Desert Warrior, Piranha, U.S. Marine Corps LAV, Dardo Hitfist, and Bradley M2M3, a dedicated anti-tank missile carrier based on the Striker. Airborne TOW is in service in at least 13 countries. More than 2,100 units have been delivered, and helicopters fitted with the TOW missile include the Augusta Westland Lynx, Augusta Westland A129, Bell Textron 206L, UH-1 Huey, Hughes 500MD helicopter, Eurocopter Bo 105, and Bell Textron AH-1 Cobra attack helicopter. How Tank Anti-Missiles Work In its basic infantry form, the system breaks down into a number of modules, a folding tripod mount, a launch tube, into the rear of which encased missiles are inserted, a mandatory daysight tracker unit, which can be augmented with an optional ANTAS-4 or ANTAS-4A gas-cooled night sight, or an all-in-one tracker unit on the M41 ITAS version, and a traversing unit, which mounts onto the tripod and carries the launch tube in sight, that also includes the weapon's trigger and the bridging clamp, which mates with the missile's umbilical data connector. In addition to this main assembly, there's a separate fire control system FCS module, which performs all the guidance calculations and a battery pack to power the system. These two modules link to each other, with the FCS then linked to the day sight with a cable. When the target is sighted and the trigger is pulled, there's a 1.5 second firing delay while the missile spins up its internal gyroscope and the thermal battery reaches operating temperature. Once this concludes, the launch motor fires through the rear nozzle, propelling the missile from the tube. This soft launch motor fires for only 0.05 seconds and burns out before the missile has exited the tube. As the missile exits the launch tube, first four wings just forward of the flight motor spring open forwards, followed by four tail control surfaces which flip open rearwards as the missile completely exits the launch tube. As the wings fully extend at about 7 meters from the launcher, the flight motor ignites, boosting the missile's speed to approximately 600 miles per hour, 1,000 kilometers per hour during its burn time. At 0.18 seconds after launch, around 65 meters from the launcher, the warhead is armed by G-forces from acceleration by the flight motor, a safety feature intended to protect the operator if the flight motor fails to ignite. The flight motor burns out 1.6 seconds after launch, with the missile gliding for the remainder of its flight time. After the tracker captures the missile, IR sensors bore sighted to the day sight tracker continuously monitor the position of an IR beacon in the missile's tail relative to the line of sight, with the FCS generating course corrections which are sent via the command link to the missile's integral flight control unit. The missile then corrects its flight path via the control surface actuators. The operator keeps the sight's crosshair centered over the target until impact. If the missile fails to strike the target, the command wires are automatically cut at 3,000 meters on the original tow and 3,750 meters on the most current production tows. 
An automatic wire cut also occurs if the tracker fails to detect the missile's thermal beacon within 1.85 seconds of launching. Variants BGM-71A, a basic missile of the tow. It has a range of 3,000 meters and penetrates 433 millimeter of rolled homogeneous armor. It was first fielded in 1970. BGM-71B, it has an improved range of 3,750 meters. This missile fires faster and has a longer wire, otherwise it is similar to the basic BGM-71A. ITOW Improved TOW or BGM-71C It was adopted by the U.S. Army in 1976. This missile has improved shape-charged warhead. It also has an extensible probe that triggers detonation of the warhead and provides optimum detonation distance. The probe is extended after the launch. This missile penetrates 630 mm of steel armor. TOW-2 is an upgraded version of the TOW. It entered service at it entered service with the U.S. Army in 1983. This weapon system is composed of new BGM-71D missile, new reusable launcher, missile guidance set, and sight system. The launcher is lighter. It is compatible with all previous tow missiles. It has thermal optics and can be used at night. The new missile has a larger warhead, 5.9 kilograms, with extensible probe as well as improved guidance. It has a range of 3.75 kilometers and penetrates 900 millimeters of steel armor. Over 77,000 BGM-71D anti-tank guided missiles were produced. TOW-2A or BGM-71E, it appeared in 1987. It has a tandem warhead and is intended to defeat tanks with explosive reactive armor ERA. It penetrates 900 millimeters of steel armor behind ERA. Newer missiles starting from the TOW 2A are produced both in wireless and wire guided forms. The wireless missiles require no special alterations to the launcher. Over 34,000 of the BGM 71E missiles have been delivered. In 2003, these missiles were used by U.S. Marines in Iraq, destroying several Iraqi T 72 tanks. TOW 2B or BGM 71F is a top attack missile. It appeared in 1987. This missile explodes above a tank to penetrate its thin top armor. In concept, it was similar to a Swedish RBS-56 Bill. It has a maximum range of 4,200 meters. Its warhead weighs 6.14 kilograms. This missile lacks an extensible probe. These anti-tank missiles are produced in wireless and wire-guided forms. First unit was equipped with these missiles in 1992. In 2003, these missiles alongside with the TOW 2As were used by U.S. Marines in Iraq, destroying several Iraqi T-72 tanks. The conflict marked the first operational firing of the TOW 2B missiles. However, during combat in Afghanistan, the TOW 2B was found to be less effective than the older TOW 2A. TOW 2N was an improvised anti-tank system that used missiles with wireless data link. It appeared in 1989. However, this weapon was not adopted by the U.S. military. BGM-71G is a top attack missile with different warhead. It also lacks extensible probe. BGM-71H is a bunker busting missile. It is used against buildings or fortified structures. This missile has a range of 3.75 kilometers. This missile is produced in wireless and wire guided forms. TOW-2B Arrow is an extended range version with a maximum range of 4.5 kilometers. Previously, this weapon was known as TOW-2B ER. This missile is produced in wireless and wire guided forms. TUFIN is an Iranian reverse engineered version of the TOW. Thanks for watching.